Hey there, good evening. Welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So today, sorry, I'm trying to avoid some of the glare here. There's quite a bit of it. Um, I don't know you normally do them so late. I didn't get a chance today. I had to go out and then um, I'd actually prepared everything but couldn't do the video, so I'm doing it now. So this, anyways, is my Friday Night Live experience, and tonight we're going to be talking about this band, Genesis. i try to get it without the glare. Uh, the Way We Walk, this is the shorts. I do have the longs now, which I didn't have when I decided to do this one first. But I guess it works out because this one is volume one and that's volume two, so we will probably, almost certainly, do volume two next week. So Genesis one, Genesis 2, Volume 1, The Way We Walk. Okay, so the vitals about this album, first of all, uh, released November the 9th, 1992. Uh, it's about 63 minutes in length. Uh, Virgin and Atlantic Records. Um, Nick Davis, Rob Colby, and Genesis produced the album. Okay, the personnel, of course, Phil Collins on vocals, lead vocals, and percussion. Uh, Tony K, Tony K, <laughs> uh, Tony Banks on uh, keyboards and backing vocals. Uh, Tony K would have uh, probably liked to have gone to Genesis at this point. <laughs> they were making a lot of money. Um, Mike Rutherford on guitar, bass, and backing vocals, and then of course the additional uh, two guys that play on and on the live with them: Daryl Strummer, bass, guitar bass and guitar and backing vocals and Chester Thompson on percussion and drums um, so there that's the vitals about this album okay so this album has most of the stuff is very poppy um, you know some people don't like that aspect of Genesis but you know you know I was a yes I was a rush I was a um, uh, Genesis I liked all those bands in the uh, before they became um, well to be honest with you I didn't start listening to Genesis till 1980 and uh, the first album that I heard was of course the Duke album but it wasn't the first I bought the first two I bought were Trick of the Tale and Wind and the Wuthering so I had no experience with Peter Gabriel to me um, I knew Peter Gabriel had played with Genesis, but I liked Peter Gabriel's stuff, and I liked that Genesis stuff that I was talking, that I just talked about. So there was no connection between the two with me for a time period that lasted into almost this century uh, before I started really getting into the old Peter Gabriel stuff, and that has become my favorite stuff. But anyway, at this rate, um, we're talking about this live album tonight. So this album... Pretty much all the pop stuff that they did in the 80s. Um, not, it's bu not by any means bad stuff. I don't think it's bad. Um, you, you want kind of more from your Genesis than this stuff, though. Um, I can understand why old Genesis fans have a real hard time with this. And it's probably the same with Yes, because Yes did pretty much the same thing in the 80s. And Rush, maybe a little bit later, but did pretty much the same thing they went very synthy and poppy as well so um, I think that was just the movement of the time period so I've gotten over it quite a long time ago so Genesis had less of an impact than the other two did with me because I wasn't into them at the time so they it didn't bother me as much their poppy style so anyways they've got um, quite a bit of stuff on this album um, you know they call it the shorts but you know most of the tracks on here um, if you look at it when you're, you know, this is actually just go through this picture of them here. Jester Thompson and Daryl Strummer on the other end there. Um, lots of nice stuff here. Anyways, um, if you look at the track lengths when you're, um, when you're actually playing the track, you'll see that most of them are five, between five and seven minutes long. They call them the shorts. Only a progressive rock band would do that. Most 
most normal bands think of the sh if they're thinking of short songs they're talking like two three minutes right but these guys they're talking five seven minutes for the short songs um, which makes me wonder what the long songs are going to be like so anyways uh, it starts out with a land of confusion that's a good track I like that track um, it's kind of it's poppy and has that poppy sound to it but really uh, uh, really one of their stronger poppy songs I think uh, no son of mine um, not really as familiar with the song I did listen to it. it's pretty it's pretty pretty good track uh, Jesus he knows me I, I personally kind of like that song but I can see why a lot of people really can't stand that song <laughs> anyways it, it's done fairly well here on this album throwing it all away it's a song I could throw away I have no use for that song I can't dance another one fits into that category so those two pff, chuck them both mama I like mama it's kind of an eerie bit to it with that that synthesizer bit and and the voice uh, they don't do that so much here but the song is really good hold my heart and uh, could live without that that's all that's all another song I could live without uh, in too deep that's a girl song I don't want to hear it I'm sorry if that sounds sexist it's not meant it's not really meant to be but I think the song was written primarily for the female audience um, and that's fine I don't have a problem with it tonight 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 uh, another kind of poppy the song that not really crazy about invisible touch I don't mind though that's that's a track that I, I quite like see and I think the reason if you look at the tracks I like on here as opposed to the ones I don't like the ones I don't like are very ballad oriented their love songs and stuff like that where land of confusion um, and invisible touch and Jesus he knows me they don't really have too much to do with that they're a little the lyrics are kind of a little bit more progressive even if the music isn't so it's a pretty solid album uh, lots of really and, and the, the production on here is good and the sound is really good as well um, I think the other album will probably be more suited to my own personal taste um, I won't know until I actually listen to it. This one I've listened to it in its entirety a couple times already. Sorry, I'm trying to get it back in here. It doesn't want to go. Okay, it's in there now. So, a uh, pretty solid album. If you like Poppy Genesis, this is a live version of the Poppy Genesis. Nothing special about it live-wise. Um, I don't think there's any drum solos on this one. They probably saved that for Volume 2. But, uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty good listening to easy listening it's not it's not an album that takes a lot to get into or you know but some of the some of the uh, some of the ballads are a little bit much to take um, but anyways I think it's uh, overall pretty solid um, I would have liked to see maybe seen the concert and see how that worked out I find also Phil Collins's voice Maybe I'm maybe I'm imagining things. I just got to turn here. My legs bothering me. Uh, maybe I'm imagining something here, but I've noticed as the '80s went on, and once he got into the '90s, especially, I noticed his voice is kind of. Um, it's not the same as it was on the Trick of the Tail or Wind in the Weathering, or even, and then there were three. Even Duke, you know, like it's got that certain quality that fits Genesis but this just gets kind of high and kind of squeaky I don't maybe it's just me maybe I'm just hearing something here that isn't here but he's still Phil Collins so I mean and maybe the songs fit here with him as well maybe that's that's the way he's written them to fit into so anyways um, there you have it um, Genesis live uh, the way it the way we walk uh, volume one the shorts uh, didn't cost me much pretty easy to listen to I hope you enjoyed this episode I hope you uh, will like and subscribe it helps a lot um, and we'll be doing uh, probably next Friday we will do the sh the longs you know the longs actually is is actually pretty virtually identical covers and everything except for the uh, players are all 
colored out so you don't see their faces or anything you just see their shapes so anyways um i look forward to doing that as well i hope you have a good weekend enjoy your friday night and uh, we will see you soon with uh, the next week's show list okay take care bye